let's take a look at ground covers, specifically California native ground covers. Now, before we take a look at the ground covers, there's something, a couple of things you got to know about California native ground covers. One, as opposed to planting in spring and uh, maybe even early summer with some of the South Africans and other water saving stuff, native stuff should be planted in, no, in November, just before the rain. So it has the uh, nice cooling rains to keep it kind of hunkering down and favoring its root growth during the early part of the year. And then later on, it'll start growing uh, stem and leaf growth as well. But you want to put it in November so that you get decent root growth initially. And this is to, so that the first year, it's going to be under a lot of stress because it hasn't acclimated and, and hasn't brought down, you know, put down enough roots, et cetera, to really do a good job of growing in your area, which it will. But you got to kind of baby it that first year. Keep an eye on it, make sure it's not wilting, et cetera. You may have to water, put additional water on it. But once it's been in the ground a couple of years, one to two years, it should be able, to, most of these you should be able to get to where you're watering them no more than once a month in the summertime. Now, if you live in a fire area, you have to be really careful though. Uh, one, make sure that you're following all the guidelines for fire landscaping, which is having different zones. And two, a lot of these are quite flammable if you're not watering them. So if there's drought restrictions, you live up in a fire area and you have this kind of landscaping, it's, you know, unless you get to give it additional water, it's not going to be as fire resistant as you'd like. So keep that in mind. You may want to put, there are some succulent uh, ground cover like things that are California natives. One of my favorites would be um, the uh, Echeveria like plants in the uh, Dudleyus. Dudleyus are, are really good. There's some great ground cover Dudleyus that you can put in that will, they, they spread by stolons and come out. Um, check those out. Dudleyus are probably, you know, since they're succulent, they're going to be fairly fire resistant as long as you keep them clean and keep some of the, the old uh, foliage off that dies off. So anyway, with that being said, let's take a look at the top seven, in my opinion, California native ground covers. Okay, number seven, we're gonna go from lowest to highest. Number seven, snowberry or creeping snowberry, Symphocarpus mollus. This is a tough as nails shade ground cover. Um, it's gonna be one and a half foot tall by about four feet wide. Low water once established. White berries, do believe they're in the, the spring, and but don't hold me to it. And it's a great companion for oak trees. There aren't a lot of plants you can grow underneath oak trees that you know aren't going to be competing with the oak or the oak competing with them, and one of them's going to have a problem. This one's fine. This one works great under just about any tree or shrub. But it is a it is a shade-loving plant, so it's shade the part shade, you can't put it in full size. So that's in the family Caprophylacea, uh, which is the same family as um, honeysuckle. So it's related to honeysuckle. Symphora carpus mollus, creeping snowberry. Next, and this is something I really didn't know about until I went to the Botanic Garden uh, this last weekend to take a look at some of these. And I just fell in love with it. This is Solanum shanti, mountain pride. It's a type of solanum. Uh, if you're familiar with solanums, uh, the potato vine is one of them. Uh, there's white and uh, blue potato vines. And uh, they're related to tomatoes, but they're not in the same genus, but they're very closely related. Uh, and they're in the Solanaceae, which is a family of potatoes, tomatoes, and a lot of other neat things. Uh, it's about one to two foot uh, high and two to three foot wide. You know, this I wouldn't use this as an as a entire ground cover. In fact, look a note about ground covers in general that are California natives or anything. You don't want to put huge masses of them down and nothing else. You want you want to vary them. You want if you're going with like one major ground cover, you want to put something like this and a few others like the solanum in between to give it some variance. And you'll also have flowers at different times of the year. 
This moon's in the spring. Inland, it likes part shade. And you water it once a week in the summer, but not a lot. Now, here's something interesting. It can climb. Yes, it's poisonous. It is poisonous. It's, uh, this solanum is poisonous. Now, the ripe berries generally aren't poisonous in a solanum, but I'm not going to test that out. Uh, it is poisonous. So keep that in mind. Whether how, how deadly poisonous it is, I don't know. I don't know if there's been any poisonings with this plant. However, it's, it is poisonous. So it, you don't want to put it anywhere where toddlers are going to be or pets. If you have chewing pets, you don't want to put it near chewing pets. Uh, and it can climb. It can climb on, you got to keep an eye on it because sometimes it can climb up the plant that it's planted under. So you know, keep, keep it off the plant. Uh, but it's the color on it is just amazing. It's, it's one of the truly more colorful plants, uh, more colorful uh, solanums that I've seen. Okay, number five, and I love this plant, Berberus aquifolium variety repens. Also, it used to be known as Mahonia repens. Kind of a common plant used in uh, horticulture here. It's also a native and very tough plant. You can grow it. It loves being underneath oak trees. If you have a California native oak and you're wondering what can I put under it, this is one of the few things you can put under it. That, the snowberry and a few others. And it just does fantastic. It's about uh, two to three feet uh, tall and five feet wide. Although I have seen some cultivars that are lower than that, that are darker. So this is the native version. Of, there are some versions that are cultivars that are darker, have uh, like a dark red color to them. Uh, yellow flowers too, you can see the yellow flowers in there. Okay, and next. All right, so the next one, this is another one you wanna put spot in your, uh, in your bigger ground covers. This is Glandularia lilacina. It used to be called Verbena Little Cedar, De La Mina, or De La Mina, I'm sorry, which means of the mines. So it's probably found this near some mines of the place. Uh, beautiful plant, flowers most of the year with those beautiful lavender flowers. Uh, it's got kind of very patterned like leaves. Its height is two to three feet, and it's three, uh, width is two to three feet, I'm sorry, and the height is three to four feet. So. It's not a classic ground cover, but it's a great plant to put in between ground covers. Um, flowers most of the year, sun to part sun. So you can put it in full sun, no problem. Number three, this is Polygonacea. Uh, in the Polygonacea, it's Areogonum fasciculatum, Warner Little, or Warner Little buckwheat. Areogonum fasciculatum is one of those buckwheats that doesn't have large leaves, it has uh, cylindrical uh, needle-like leaves, ish, and so it looks very it looks very it looks very formal for a California native. And this one in particular blooms a lot. It blooms a lot. It's and it's an excellent bird and butterfly plant. Uh, feeds a lot of different butterflies and birds both. And it's one to two foot tall and five to ten foot wide, so it covers a lot of area. And it's tough as nails. Uh, the only, only drawback with polygonums is every now and then, it, you don't even have to do this. You, you get, you wanna, sometimes you want to cut back the, the seed heads, but on a lot of these, the seed heads look really cool. And so you just leave them there and you're fine. Plus they fit the seed heads, I do believe are what feed the birds. So this is number two. This has been around for a long time. It's a superstar. It, it's, uh, you can't go wrong with it. I mean, there is a, there's a couple of things you can do wrong with Arctostaphylos, and one is prune them when it's wet. You don't ever want to do that because they're very subject uh, they're subject to uh, to fungi. Also, you don't want to prune them severely, so give them plenty of room so you don't have to prune them severely. But this one is Arctostaphylos emerald carpet. It's a hybrid between uh, two different. It's been around so long they don't even know what the original plants were, but it's about a half a foot tall and three to five feet wide. So it's a great foreground ground cover. Low water use once established, no more than once a month in the summer. You do wanna water, you, you can, it's possible not to water in the summer, but if you live anywhere in a fire area, you don't wanna do that. You wanna make sure you water at least once a month 
in the summertime to keep them from being too flammable. Uh, and it's a proven landscape plan. So finally, what's number one? What is number one? Salvia bees bliss. And there's a reason for that. It's just amazing. We have about two large beds of bees bliss here. One is behind the library on the west side of the library. And the other one is in the Crescent Garden. Look at that right there. This is the, the, on the left side there, you're seeing bees bliss. It's not in flower. It's now starting to come into flower, by the way. It's a spring, summer, and uh, fall flowering plant. And bees bliss, look at that. It, it's not very tall. It's maybe two feet at the most. And I, I see, you know, the, the ones I see are, even, they're all lower than a foot. Sometimes they'll mound up a little bit. You can cut them back and keep them low if you want. Um, it's a hybrid of Salvia lucophila and Salvia somanensis and Salvia cubrania. It's pulled a uh, full apart sun, very fast growing. And it's just, a, you know, it, you, you, if you don't water it too frequently in the summertime, it'll go a little dormant. So you want to water it about every two weeks in the summertime, maybe every week if, if it's really hot, just keep it from going dormant but you don't have to water it a lot. So that's number one, Bees Bliss. I've heard of this, this even has its own fan club. It's such a nice ground cover. I'm, I'm really impressed by it. And that's, that's what it looks like on the right-hand corner there, upper right-hand corner. That's what it looks like when it's blooming. So that's it. I just took this picture a couple of days ago. It, they're really, uh, their trains are back on and they're all getting, they're, they're getting aggressive. And, it's mating season one more time.